Hey everybody, it's Andrew Martin coming to you with another video on this very, very quiet Sunday. It's so wonderful. Um, I was up early this morning and saw the most spectacular sunrise. Um, and it's just really a beautiful, quiet, peaceful morning here in Seattle and still finishing up my coffee. Um, just enjoying the quiet, sitting with my thoughts and... <clears throat> sitting with myself and my team and my guides and you know this is some of my favorite time during the day when i can just be still and enjoy the quiet um but what i want to offer to you today is this idea and this question that i really i think it's at this point in in time at this point on the planet, I think it's one of the most important questions we can be asking, and it's a very simple question, and that is where in our lives are we still holding ourselves apart from spirit? And when I say spirit, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm talking about love, because that's what spirit is. Spirit is love, love for all things. Love is the force behind all things. Love transforms us, it carries us, it embraces us, it pushes us, sometimes it squeezes us, um, you know, it pushes us to places and calls us to places and takes us to places that oftentimes we had never even dreamed it was possible or transforms things in our lives that we never ever thought could be transformed. And these are the places in, the, in your life that I'm talking about. Where is it do we still hold ourselves apart from love? And it's almost like sometimes we hold ourselves hostage. You know, as if there's this problem or an issue or a challenge or a block in our life that we feel is too big or too scary or too important or too dark or that somehow we're unworthy of letting something go or unworthy of finding happiness in an area that we had never found it before that we feel ashamed of our actions in the past and what we've done And the, you know, the one thing I know to be true in my life at this point and this, what this journey has really shown me is that love transforms everything. It's not a question of can it or will it. It's just a question really of when. I mean, it's inevitable. Even if we spend a lifetime or if we see a lifetime and we perceive it as, wow, that was a really loveless life, right? That was so sad or scary or dark or, or violent or horrible or awful or whatever. Inevitably, even that will be transformed by love because as important as an individual human life is and as important as our lifetime experience is, it's still only a page in a book. And so if we don't get it this time, we'll get it next time. And at the end of each incarnation, we always return to love, to the embrace of that which we are. We are love. And we hold ourselves apart from that for a million different reasons. But ultimately, in my experience, it, you know, it comes down to fear of some sort because fear is the opposite of love. <clears throat> it's not hate, it's fear. And so when we begin to examine, and what I invite you to begin to ask yourself very lovingly and compassionately, is where in my life do I hold myself apart from love? Where do I think... 
that I have to do all the heavy lifting or, you know, this idea that like, well, you know, 85% of my life is great. So this 15%, I can deal with it. Sure, you can, but you don't have to. And love is always inviting us to a deeper understanding and a deeper surrender to it. And not, you know, we, when we talk about surrender so often, we have this old idea, you know, that it's a sign of weakness or it means that we lost. But when I'm talking about surrender, surrender is, all right, come on in. <laughs> Let's do this. You know, the surrender of I'm, I'm done with fighting, I'm done with resisting, I'm done with struggling, I'm done with being afraid, I'm done with being, of living as a prisoner within my own life. And I get it, I get it. I've talked about this before, <clears throat> that, you know, my thing, and we all have a thing, um, my thing was sex. You know, drugs and alcohol, take it or leave it. I certainly did plenty of them in my, you know, my life, in my 20s and half of my, well, my 30s too. <laughs> Let's be honest. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank God the internet was not around in the way that it is now. And so there's not, you know, really, I mean, there's some photographs floating around out there, like hard copies of photographs, but thank God my life was not digitally recorded in my 20s. Because, man, <laughs> but my thing was sex. You know, sex was the way that I medicated, that I numbed, that I soothed, that I avoided, that I, you know, celebrated, that I, you know, sometimes even punished myself. I mean, the idea of, there was so much stuff wrapped up in my sex life and the fear and the shame and the anxiety that I used to feel and the hopelessness. You know, I really felt that I was just a prisoner of the sexual compulsion and through this work and finally, finally getting to the point where I said, okay, let's, you know, it was almost like a process of elimination. I mean, honestly, I kind of did, I sort of took care of everything else. But the truth of the matter was, is that the one big major thing in my life was, and it wasn't even sex, my relationship with sex was a manifestation of what I had going on inside. And I used it as a way to avoid dealing with the real stuff. You know, I, it's kind of like my relationship with sex was the dog and pony show. It was the, you know, it was the sparkly, shiny, distracting thing. It was the, <clears throat> it was the great and powerful Oz, but really the man behind the curtain was the real deal. But I just never, there were so many nights where I was hopeless that I was ever going to have a healthy relationship with sex and have a healthy sexual relationship. And what I really understand is that underneath that was so much fear. And sex was just a, a story. You know, my relationship with sex and my belief about it and what I thought that it meant to me was just a story that I kept telling myself. And it's a perfect example of, you know, the mind and the stories that we create and that we craft become these identities and the mind becomes attached to them. And the mind doesn't care if it is a happy story or if it's a story of misery and anxiety. As long as it's predictable and knowable and comfortable in the sense of, you know, I know how to play this part. I know how to tell this story. when I was finally willing to let go of that story and let go of that identity of Andrew who has, you know, the messed up relationship with sex, it was terrifying. It was terrifying because the unknown is so much bigger and scarier at first glance than even the most miserable story that we believe about ourselves. Because even the most miserable story, we know how it ends. And we relive that story over and over and over and over and over and over and over. You know, ad nauseum, ad, fin ad infinitum. I mean, until we just break 
down and surrender and say, there's got to be another way. There's got to be another way. And I don't really believe anymore that I have to do all the heavy lifting. And once I surrendered the story, what I realized is what was beneath it was fear. The opposite of love. The fear of being seen. The fear of making myself vulnerable. The fear of being different. The fear of... not having a story to hide behind. And it's so amazing because the fear held so much beauty for me. It held so many treasures and so much insight and so much love was there. Everything comes from love. Everything is brought to us lovingly. Because the universe says, I love you enough to allow you to have this experience so that you can remember that you don't need to be saved, that you don't need to be rescued, that you don't need to be fixed. Because love loves us and embraces us and carries us, period. And it is only ever our attempt to hold ourselves apart from it because of some story that creates the misery of our experience. So whatever it is, that you think is too big for love to handle. I wanna provide you and offer you this idea that love creates everything. So love creates the galaxies and the universes and the planets and, and love keeps them spinning in orbit and love is what calls the flowers forth to, to bloom every spring. And If love can handle that, why on earth do we continue to be an advocate for our misery and our fear and our anxiety? If we're going to advocate for something, let's advocate for our surrender and our transformation and our expansion. Love calls us to go internal. This is the answer. The crucible of transformation is within. The genesis of all things is internal. And love is always, always offering us, inviting us, calling us. Sometimes, you know, seemingly <laughs> kind of pushing us in the direction to go internal. And it is internally that we can meet our fears and transform them. When we begin to move in the direction of what makes us uncomfortable, when we begin to investigate and interrogate and become relentless in our search for any part of ourselves that we have held apart from love, that's when the really, really exciting stuff begins to occur. Because we meet those fears in our inner landscape and we sit with them and we embrace them and we ask them what they hold for us and why are you here and what do you want me to know? Because those fears are just a messenger. And they don't want to be hanging around any more than we want them there. So as soon as we acknowledge them, they transform. And what they leave behind is love. Because in the end, that's all there is. Once all the dust settles and all the stories are gone and all the illusions have faded and all of the things that we use to hold ourselves apart from the truth of who we are, which is love. We are love. Once all that stuff has fallen away and the dust has settled, love is the only thing that's left. And it's the only thing that we need. So I invite you 
to begin to explore your relationship with love and ask it to show you where it can help you transform. And that's where the work lies. And the work is not always easy. The work oftentimes feels scary. The work oftentimes is disorienting. And, and so often we are called to show up and to have willingness to transform. <coughs> Even when we don't know why or how or when. But we can trust that the why and the how and the when will be provided to us when it is necessary or when it is time for us to know. And so often... It is the leap of faith and the showing up that scares us because the mind convinces us that no, you know, without it being predictable and measurable and quantifiable, if that's the safety net, right? The, the, the story, the belief, that's the safety net. But it's not. It's not. Oftentimes, it is just a matter of saying, okay, I surrender to love and I trust that love is what can transform all things. And love invites us to create a bigger container for what is possible in our lives. Life says you're not comfortable here anymore. Love says this is not what you want. You're restricted, you're oppressed, you're repressed, you're constricted, you're, you know, you're in this, you know, you're, you're 20 pounds of sugar in a five pound bag, <laughs> you, you, it's okay. It's safe to expand and to open up and to be vulnerable and to let the fears surface so that they can be transformed through love. So begin to ask yourself those questions. Where is it that I have room for more love? Where is it that love can show me what it is time to let go of? And where is it that I hold up a story, even a story that makes me miserable and brings me suffering and pain. What identity am I willing to let go of? What story am I willing to surrender so that I can move through it? And that's the work that I do. You know, when people ask me, what is it that you do? You know, I say, I don't heal anybody. I don't fix anybody. What I do is I access the truth of who you are, which is perfect and thriving and love, 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 worthy and deserving and successful and, and content and at peace. That's the truth of who we all are, is the infinite creator spark. And I access that version of you and I hold up the mirror to reflect that back to you. And anything that is on that mirror that obscures the version of the truth of who you are you know, that's what I call the mud on the mirror. And those are the beliefs and the stories and, the, you know, the things that we think hold us, you know, hold us apart from love or that make, you know, transformation impossible or, you know, these old beliefs and ideas. That's the mud on the mirror. And your job is to clean the mud off the mirror. My job is to hold that reflection steady and say, no, this is really who you are. This will tell you otherwise, but this is really who you are. So begin to ask yourself, and ask love, show me. Show me where there's room for you. Show me where I can have more of you. Show me where I can have a deeper connection with you. And oftentimes, the answer comes in the form of just let go. Just surrender and I'll show you. But you've got to show up. You've got to be willing. And you've got to say yes. Because even love sometimes continues to perpetuate the version of our truth that we hold up as valid, even if that means it continues to make our life miserable, love will say, if you believe these things about you, I will lovingly reflect them back to you through your experiences until you decide that you want to experience something different. And the minute that we decide we want something different and that we show up with willingness even when we don't know how, especially when we don't know how, that's when the internal shift occurs. And that's where our work lies. And love will show us. So that's the question I have for you today. That's my offering for you today is to begin to ask yourself, 
Where is it that there is room for more love, more truth, more light in my life? And where is it that I'm just really tired of advocating for my own misery? And I'm willing to let that go, even if it feels like a death because it's an identity that I've gotten so comfortable with and I know it so well. But I know we're ready to tell a new story, to sing a new song. And the minute that we begin to face these fears, they disintegrate. They wither in the face of a heart that is open and willing. And there is nothing that love cannot transform. So that's it. That's my offering for this Sunday. And if you're curious to know what message unconditional love has for you, what source wants you to know, I can help you access that. And I can help guide you to the place where your work can begin. <clears throat> but it all takes your willingness to show up and ask for help. And trust me when I say I've been there. I have been there. So that's it. Go to my website, check me out there. You can also find my social media buttons on my website. So Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, <coughs> YouTube, all that stuff is there. Take a peek around and when you're ready, book a session with me. I hope that you're happy and healthy and smiling. I hope that this video has given you some things to think on and some questions to start to ask yourself. And perhaps a little bit of a fire has been lit within you to surrender and just say, love, come on in, show me because I'm ready. Thank you as always for watching. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.